Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Brendan from Evoke Bike. So I think I've compiled the complete cycling nutrition guide for you. We initially had a few different blog posts out. I've boiled it all down into one post and what I really wanna highlight here has been the hardest topic for myself to conquer over the past 10 years of training and racing is understanding how to periodize my carb intake. And this post though goes in everything from basic nutrition, when to focus on the different macronutrients, when do you shift your diet towards carbs and what does that mean? Uh, a carb intake schedule, a grocery list, um, talking about duration and intensity in nutrition. What do you eat when you're training more than two hours, less than two hours, an easy two hours? Um, a lot of different scenarios, and then we get into carb loading, understanding what is carb loading, what's the history of it, how do you do it, when do you do it, how many carbs do you consume, there's a lot of carb talk in here, and what food should you use, and the side effects of carb loading. You know, you retain three grams of water for every one gram of carbohydrate, so when you're carb loading, and we'll talk about this, it retains a lot of water, pounds of water, because it shows that you can, the average person can hold 500 grams of carbs. Um, but when you're trained and you're a cyclist, let me scroll down here, um, there's a really good review that the guys from Trainer Road had highlighted. And they said, hey, go over here if you wanna learn more about all this stuff. So definitely tipping my hat to them to putting me onto this study. And you gotta remember that you can't just stuff 400 grams of carbs into your body and absorb it. So the periodization and the timing of the carb intake is key. So what we wanna look at is we need to use carbs for racing on Saturday and Sunday, let's say. And then you might have a hard workout on Tuesday and a moderate one on Wednesday. And then you rest a little bit going into the races again. Are you just eating carbs the whole time? Like you can't do that. So how do you cycle this and periodize this? And I get into the nitty gritty in the study, but the muscles can hold up to 700 grams and in a larger well-trained athlete and about 160 in the liver so when it all comes down to it, it's really like I, I could hold about 900 grams of carbs which is a lot of carbohydrate so the way to the the i'm thinking what's the most important stuff that an athlete needs to know so after you work out one to 1.2 grams of carbs per one kilogram of body weight is what you can refill with. Now, there's different studies showing there's a magic window, there's not a magic window, you know, 24 hours after the exercise, no matter whether you utilize that window or not, um, the stores were equal. Boiling it all down to make it as simple as possible, one to 1.2 grams per one kilogram of body weight to restore your glycogen stores. Now, if you're trying to restore for someone doing 900 grams, that's gonna take me at 80 kilogram body weight about 10 hours to do it. So this is when we start talking about periodizing your carbs. You can't just go eat a mega pasta dinner, huge pieces of bread when you've you know traveled all day and think that you're carb loading, you're not. You need to be eating in the car on the way to the race and do you want to count carbs? Unfortunately, maybe you do. If you want to optimize your performance, you got to know what you're putting in the machine. And that's that takes some time and discipline. And I had tried counting carbs years ago and I was avoiding fat, which was silly. So the next part, so you know that you don't want to just overfeed and bomb your system. You know how much you want to eat after the ride, and you know that you now know that you want small, frequent doses. Um, the next thing is this idea that training low a couple years ago, somehow it got out the team sky, was doing all this low carb training, and then they would super compensate for race day. That is not a thing. You will replete your stores faster if you fully depleted them, but you do not go higher. So you do not increase your storage. Now there is a study that shows that you might be able to utilize them more and increase a little bit if you did fasted training one or two times a week, but the issues with that is that a lot of athletes don't recover enough for, with their glycogen for harder sessions. 
So the benefit and the data is not really there. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and the other point that I want to mention in this video before just sending you to the blog where it's all typed up and easier to digest, no pun intended, you will read a lot that says eight to 12 grams of carbs per one kilogram of body weight is what's the sort of standard for carb loading. 12 is a lot. Um, I think too much because of the water weight. I would say if you're doing this 48 hours before an event, the two days out, six to nine grams fall in that sweet, like seven to eight grams per one kilogram of body weight of carbs. Now you gotta remember, you need to be taking away some fats and some proteins. Um, you're training less, you don't need as much protein anyways. And the fats, you shouldn't be searching for fats, they should naturally just be coming up in your diet. But like when I make oatmeal in the morning, most mornings I put uh, 32 grams of one serving of peanut butter in there. When I'm carb loading, I take that out. So it doesn't have that, but it has a banana and it has some honey. And I max out at my 90 grams that I can absorb. That's my little meal to get going. Um, the other thing is that then when you're one day out, I would land on 10 grams per kilogram of body weight. Now, to make everything more confusing, there is a study that they highlight and I put in here that even if they compare to five gram and a 10 gram group, over seven days of training, while the five gram group did lose glycogen stores, it did not impede their performance when they're training at 80% of VO2 max within the week. My issue with this is though that you are probably having some sessions or a race that will go above 80% VO2 max. So you want to have that higher performance fall to the eight grams. Um, I do not do eight to 10 grams every day. I'm five to six on my light days. I lean heavier towards 10 grams on uh, weekend rides and high intensity sessions. High intensity sessions, I find eight works for me. Um, but I am very rigid. I've been tracking all my macros on a scale for the past couple months and it's helped me lose uh, some fat and just keep in control of eating. You know, it's easier when you can look at the things you've eaten. I use my fitness panel and be like, dude, you're not that hungry. Like you've already consumed 2000 calories and you only have, need, you know, um, another 700 more today. So you're good. Um, listen to your body though. The other thing is this is very individualized. The more you've trained, I'm 10 years into this, 100,000 plus miles on Strava alone, I can absorb more carbs and use more carbs because of all the signaling and changes that have gone on my body. If you're a newer cyclist, you might not be able to absorb and maintain all those. So you might wanna lean, you know, your repletion rate is really stick to that one gram per kilogram of body weight or maybe even 0.8. But uh, I think that is all um again more research needed on fasted training i do not recommend that so i tried to boil it down at the very end too carb loading two days out six to nine grams per one kilogram of body weight the day before the event eight to ten grams per kilogram of body weight during the event 75 to 90 grams of carbs per hour does not matter how much you weigh that's the max that we can absorb there's a study out there that shows 144 grams an hour it's not peer reviewed it's very, um, that's a lot. You could you could fill around with it. Other athletes have said, oh, I can absorb 110 and they don't get GI distress. Um, on 60 to 90 is what the standard says now. So I say 75 to 90. And then post ride, get some of the proteins in and uh, one gram per kilogram of body weight of carbs immediately to restore the glycogen. But if you're going to a rest day, you don't need to rush into it. So. I hope this boils it all down. Let me know what questions you have. Nutrition is huge, half the game. I mean, I made a lot of gains by cleaning up my diet. And this year, I'm safely five to six pounds lighter um, and stronger. So uh, things are always changing. Let's stay on top of it. And uh, hey, I know some of you guys haven't subscribed to the channel. Please do that. And please share this with one friend if you found it helpful. And I appreciate your time. Take care, see ya.